Hi, my name is Stuart Halloway, and I'm going to introduce you to database functions in Datomic. Here's a simple Hello World style function implemented in Java. Greet takes a name, manufactures a greeting, and returns it. Here is that same Hello World function implemented as a function literal in Datomic. Notice some of the similarities. You have a parameter list, you have the code body. In addition, in a Datomic database function, you have a specification of language. That is because Datomic functions can be implemented in more than one language, currently Java or Clojure. The literal form has an equivalent API representation built out of primitive strings, maps, and lists. So you can construct a function programmatically at runtime by calling the peer.function constructor. Database functions fit into transaction data like any other data. Here's that hello world function literal as a dbfun attribute of some entity. The same entity can have any other arbitrary attributes you like. Typically, you'll have an ident so that you can look up the function to call it later. Once you have transaction data with some database functions, you can put those functions into the database by simply calling transact. You can retrieve by simply calling entity, and then you can call the function by looking up the dbfun attribute and calling invoke. Now let's look at some of the things that you might use database functions for. We'll begin with atomic update, and then we'll take a look at construction and validation of entities, and conclude by looking at using Datomic to distribute code. The story of Atomic Update begins with the basics, assert and retract. All data in Datomic at bottom is represented as assertions or retractions. An assertion looks like a list led by dbAdd. Here, John likes pizza. A retraction looks like a list led by dbRetract. Here, John no longer likes ice cream. You can do quite a bit with assert and retract, but one area that may cause problems is update. Let's say that I know that John's balance is currently 100 and I want to add 10 to it. I could say assert that John's balance is now 110, but this introduces a race condition. Maybe somebody else will go in and change John's balance before this transaction arrives. In some problem domains, you can tolerate this kind of race condition, and in others, atomicity is a strong requirement. Where atomicity is a requirement, you end up wishing for other operations besides assert and retract. It would be cool if, in addition to assert and retract, there was an operation called inc that took an entity, an attribute, and a value, and increased the attribute by that value. Better yet, it would be nice if we could define these new operations ourselves, and we could do so using languages we enjoy working in. That's the objective of transaction functions in Datomic. Transaction functions are a subset of database functions intended to run inside transactions. Inside the transaction, they have access to the in-transaction value of the database so that they can assure atomic update. The way this works is through expansion. When data reaches the transactor, each item is expanded before being added to the database. The expansion for assertion or retraction is simple. They go through unchanged. The expansion for other operations is defined by functions. Here we see inc john balance 10 expanding to a single assertion that John's balance is now 110. Let's look into how that works. When inc John balance 10 is to be expanded, the transactor will look up the inc entity in the database and get its dbfun attribute. It will then invoke the database function, passing in the value of the database as the first argument. Using query and entity, you can then access any information from the database you need. In this case, we'll need to know John's current account balance. In addition, the invoke is passed whatever args came in through data with the inc call. Finally, the job of the transaction function is to produce zero or more elements of transaction data. Here, there's a single piece of transaction data, a list asserting that John's account balance is now 110. Now let's look at the implementation of inc. Inc's job is simple, as shown in the pseudocode here. Look up an entity, create the entity's new balance based on the old balance, 
create an assertion containing that new balance, and then return a list containing the assertion. Here's that same function fully implemented in Java code. Notice that all of the elements manipulated in this function are generic collection types, not specific beans or classes. Next, let's take a look at constructors. The job of a constructor function is to insulate the caller from representational details or validation details of the object being created. Imagine that we wanted to create a person. Construct person might take three arguments, an email, a first name, and a last name. Its job then is to know the internal representation of a person in the database and enforce any validation rules we want to enforce. Here the call to construct person needs to expand to three assertions for email, first name, and last name. Again, let's look at the implementation. The job of construct person is to make a map out of the person attributes passed in, validate that that map seems legal, and return a list containing the map. Again, the Java implementation is very straightforward. We begin by creating the map, and then we do something slightly interesting. Rather than calling inline validation code or making a Java method call to validation, we'll instead look up validate person as another function in the database. This demonstrates using database functions in a compositional manner. Now let's look at that validate person. In general, the job of validating an entity can be summarized as traversing the fields of interest, checking that those fields have sensible values, indicating if they don't. In Datomic, you'd indicate that they do not by throwing an exception. And then finally, for convenience, we'll return the same object passed in if it's valid. And here's that implementation. We begin with a list of fields of interest, and then we enforce our validation rules. For brevity, the validation rule here is only that the attributes are present, but you could obviously add your own amazingly sophisticated validation at this point. Notice that validate person is not a transaction function. It does not take a database as its first argument, and it does not return transaction data. This demonstrates that database functions can have arbitrary signatures and can be used outside of the context of a transaction. Finally, let's consider distribution. Think back to that simple hello world function. It already demonstrates every aspect of using Datomic as a system for distributing code. You can build database function literals and test them anywhere. You don't have to have a database. Then, when you're ready, you can install them in a database via a transaction. And once they're in the database, you can access and use them from any peer in the system. This distribution opens many interesting possibilities for code reuse and sharing across different tiers of the application. Where are we? You've seen how to create data functions with literals and programmatically. You've seen how to invoke them with invoke and store them with transact. You've seen how to extend transactions with transaction functions. In particular, we saw atomic update via ink and construct via construct person. You've seen using a database function validate from within a transaction function as an example of composing a bigger system out of smaller pieces. And finally, you've seen the implicit distribution that comes from placing your database functions in a database. Once they're there, you can run them anywhere that has access to the system. I hope that you've enjoyed this introduction to database functions in Datomic. Thank you.